Let me show you how we can convert this parametric equation, x is equal to cosine t and y is equal to sine of 2t, into a Cartesian equation. The challenging part of this equation is that, you see we have cosine t right here, but we have sine of 2t right here. The angles are different, and this is how we can take of it. We really don't like to have sine cosine, but then if they have different angles, that will give us trouble. If you look at this carefully, y is equal to sine of 2t, we have another way out, because this is just a double angle. We have a double angle formula for the sine. So look at the y equation as y equals to, by the double angle formula, we have 2 sine t times cosine t, okay? Double angle formula for the sine. And you see that cosine t is exactly x. However, we still have to figure out what sine t is in terms of x. If we can do that, then we are done. So this is how we can do it. Look at this right here. So let me put it down this way. We know cosine t is equal to x, right? Let me further write this down as x over 1, because I want to come up with the right triangle. This way, I can figure out an expression in terms of x for the sine t. The t right here is an angle. Cosine t, this is not cost, by the way. This is cosine of the angle t. It's equal to x over 1. And what's cosine? In the right triangle, let me just put it down right here. In a right triangle, put the right angle here and put the angle here, which is the t. Cosine is adjacent, and because I label the angle is here, so the adjacent is down here. The adjacent for the x, and the 1 is the hypotenuse. So we have x here and 1 right here. And now let's figure out the third side, which is this. Of course, we can do this by the Pythagorean theorem. We can just do this square minus that square and take the square root. So we have 1 minus x square, and we take the square root for that. That will be the third side. And I know you guys have seen this many times in the past already. So we are ready to go. y is equal to, we have the 2 right here still. Sine t, if you look at this triangle, sine t is opposite over hypotenuse, which is just this over that, which is just this, which is square root of 1 minus x squared for sine t. And then for cosine t, we already know this is just x, so I can just put down multiplying with x. And this is pretty much it. At the end, usually we can write this down as y equals to, we put down the number first, and we put down the x next, and then we put down the square root part at the end. 2x square root of 1 minus x squared, just like that. So this is pretty much it, right? However, if you use the calculator to graph this um, real quick, you will see the graph of this is just going to give you like this. It's just a part of the graph. This is not a sine graph, this is just like this. And typically, this is what we can do. Because of the square root that's actually bothering us, that's why we can only get half of the graph. That's square both sides. Okay, that's square both sides. And you'll see at the end, we get y squared equals to 2 squared, which that will give us 4. x squared is just x squared, and then square root of this square, square and square root cancel each other out. I'll just replace this with a parentheses, and we will put down 1 minus x squared. This is the answer. That I, would like to that I would like to present to you guys. Because if you have this for the answer, if you type this onto like a computer software, the graphing, calculator doesn't, the graphing calculator doesn't work because the y is not being isolated. But if you type this into a computer software for the graphing part, you will end up with the complete graph, which is still you have this part, but then you have the other portion as well. I call this the graph of the infinity sign. That's it.